From Fish to Infinity The best introduction to numbers I've ever seen The clearest and funniest explanation of what they are and why we need them Appears in a Sesame Street video called 1 to 3 Count with me Humphrey, an amiable but dim-witted fellow with pink fur and green, and green nose is working the lunch shift at the Fury Arms Hotel Hotel, where when he takes a call from a, from a room full of penguins, Humphrey listens carefully and then call, calls out their orders into the kitchen. Fish, 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 fish. The, this prompts Ernie to enlighten him about the virtues of number six. Children learn from this that from this that numbers are wonderful shortcuts instead of saying the word, the word fish exactly as many times as there are penguins Humphrey could use the most powerful concept of six as adults however we might notice a potential downside to numbers sure they are great in time savers but a, a serious cause in abstraction six is, um, is more ethereal than six fish precisely because it's more general it applies to six of anything six plates six penguins six uterans six uterances of the word fish is the inevitable thing they all have in common feel in dislike numbers start to seem start to seem a bit mysterious they apparently exist in some sort of platonic realm a level above reality in that respect, they are more like other lofty concepts, e.g. truth and justice, and less like the ordinary object of daily life. The philosophical state status be becomes even murkier upon further reflection. Where exactly do numbers come from? Did humanity invent them or discover them? An additional subtlety is that numbers and all mathematical ideas, for that matter, have lives. Of have lives of their own, we can control. We can control them, even though they exist in our minds. Once we decide what we mean by them, we have no say in how they behave. They obey certain laws and have certain properties, personalities, and ways of combining with one another. And there's nothing we can do about it except watch to and to and try to understand. In that sense. They are eagerly reminiscent of atoms and stars, and stars, the things of this world, which are likewise subject to laws, be, to, to, laws, to laws beyond our control, except that those things exist outside of our heads. This dual aspect of numbers, as part heaven, part earth, is perhaps the more, most, par paradoxi most par paradoxical feature and the feature that makes them so powerful, so useful. It is what the physicist Eugene Wittner had in mind when he wrote of the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the nature of sciences. In case it's not clear, it's not clear what I mean about the, the lives of numbers and their uncontrollable behavior, let's go back to the fury arms. Fury arms. Suppose that before Humphrey puts in the penguin's order, he suddenly gets a call on one on another line for a room occupied by the same numbers by the same number of penguins, all of them also clamoring of for fish after taking both calls. What should Humphrey yell out to the kitchen? It, if he has not if he hasn't learned anything, he could sort fish for each penguin. Of which his numbers he could tell to cook he needs six, six orders of fish for the penguin first room and six more for the second room. But what he really needs is a new concept addition. Once he'd master it, he'd probably see he needs six he needs six plus six or if or if he's or so of twelve fish. The creative process here is the same as the one that gave number that gave us numbers in the first place. Just as numbers as a shortcut for counting by ones addition is a shortcut for counting by any amount. 
This is how mathematics goes. The right abstraction relates to new insight and new power. Before long, even Humphrey might realize he can keep counting forever. Yet, despite this infinite vista, there are always constraints on our creativity. We can decide what we mean by things like n, like six plus, like six and plus. Once, but once we do, the results of expression like six plus six are beyond our control. Logic leaves us no choice. In that sense, math always involves both invention and discovery. We invent the concepts but discover the consequences, as we'll see in the coming chapters. In mathematics, our freedom lies in the question we ask and in how we pursue them, but not in the answer, but not in the answers awaiting us.